So what are roadmaps? Um, we, we have a, uh, a talk on this more from uh, conversations at Lab Week and our Endress Summit. Um, we actually have Juan here. Juan, if you wanna talk through this, you did a really great presentation on it. This is me grabbing your slides, um, but I can voice over. Yeah, happy to. Um, the thing here is that uh, when you think about roadmaps, there are several different uh, levels at which you might think about describing uh, a roadmap for a team uh, or a project. Uh, there's, of course, the lowest Zoom level uh, might be a, a very detailed um, set of tasks and to-dos that you and your team are directly executing on. Uh, and then when you can sort of zoom out uh, from that and you start thinking about the milestones that you're working with uh, other teams in adjacent areas with, um, you, you're kind of, you look at a higher granularity, then you can zoom out uh, at an even uh, higher level and then start looking at um, a set of uh specific milestones that then maybe consumers of your project or or other groups that are um you know further away from uh from your work but are, but are dependent upon your work um need information about and so on so there's um as, as you're thinking about kind of updating and, and describing uh progress along a a vision or progress along a um trajectory for a project it's extremely useful to have these um different roadmaps uh different levels of granularity for the different groups that um that need access to this information so um we've done pretty well in terms of uh, figuring out kind of the, the lower granularity uh, roadmaps and various different teams use different tools, uh, everything from GitHub to Gantt charts to um, their own uh, tasks and to-do lists and whatnot. Um, and what we were missing was this kind of like a uh, higher level Zoom view, uh, what here in the slide is described as kind of like Zoom level three in a sense, um, that corresponds well to the kind of um, uh, roadmaps that a number of teams have been working on in the last uh, couple of quarters uh, in terms of having kind of a um, a roadmap on the with uh, milestones on the order of like three to three to six milestones uh, spanning somewhere between you know kind of two to six quarters uh, ahead in time. Uh, these are not kind of like um, very uh, prescriptive uh, boundaries, but they kind of give a sense of uh, roughly the set of milestones that you want to be able to communicate uh, to a large set of users that kind of want to know um, the progress on the project. So uh, that's the set of roadmaps that we're using to coordinate across all of our teams and with a lot of the dependent users. Um, that's kind of like that Zoom level three set of roadmaps. And that's what's going to go into start maps and and in, and which Molly uh, has been using in the um, core improvement roadmap slides. Like those are kind of like that Zoom level three. Exactly. And I think that was my next slide as well. Like probably the biggest thing, having read through everyone's roadmaps um, over the past couple of days since those uh, we landed first drafts of those um, earlier this week is um, we've tended to do too many uh, is your biggest takeaway is focus, focus, focus. You can have more milestones that you keep track of as your team, as what you're working on. But when you visualize a user focused roadmap, um, this is like five milestones a year. If you have five themes per year, each of which has five milestones, you're doing it wrong. That's too many milestones. Um, those are not user focused milestones. Those are maybe team development milestones. And so um, focus, focus your roadmaps come up. And the wonderful thing is this is now computable. It's in tools, it's in GitHub issues. Um, you can have many issues and you can have different views that you, um, you include some children in one view, but not another view. And so um, big thanks to, to this new computable tool, which is more machine readable, interlinkable, um, uh, and automates that visualization process, you actually get much more optionality on how you want to visualize things, which I think is really exciting. Yeah, r roughly the the mass on um, count here, you know, will depend by project. Like you, you know, it's not exactly five or something like that. It's kind of like a, think of it as a range, uh, but definitely like if you're giving people more than six things to care about, like you're already kind of um, past the the point of um, them being able to remember and so on. So really think of the the Zoom level three as um, you know, communicating to thousands, to, to tens of thousands of people, um, not not a very granular thing. Um, what most team members individually will care about in your team is is the lower level, lower granularity map. So kind of like Zoom level one and two. Julie, I don't know if you want to talk us really quickly through star maps, the tool yeah. that Ignite has helped us build. <laughs> So I, I think a lot was already said, so I'll skip over some things. Um, but yeah, most, if not all of Endra's teams have now added their roadmaps to GitHub. So huge thank you there and huge thank you to everyone who's offered feedback along the way. Um, for the time being, you can find those links in Notion. We'll probably figure out a better a better home for those. Um, but yeah, all the links that you see in, in the link there are compatible with star maps. Um, so feel free to play around and explore some other team roadmaps. 
So just quickly, this is what you would see if you pasted a roadmap link in star maps. This one is actually a rendering of roadmaps across all of Endres. Um, in the, de the detailed view, which is what you're looking at, uh, you can see that top level issue and then a milestone one level down. Um, if that milestone has child milestones, you can keep clicking into that so you get more and more granular um, as you go. Uh, each one, as Molly mentioned, has a link to GitHub, so you can follow along um, the issue there. Uh, and then also as those child milestone issues close in GitHub, you'll start to see a progress indicator, which we're not seeing on this one yet, but we will soon. <laughs> um, it, it is working though, so if you do have any closed issues, you'll see it for uh, your roadmap. But yeah, I'm intentionally not going into too much detail. That's the gist of it. Would love though folks to play around and, and offer any feedback that they have um, so that we can help make this tool super uh, user friendly and great for the org. Thank you so much for building this. Um, yeah, I put I grabbed this together from all of the different roadmaps. I think there is some, you know, already immediate learnings from going through that exercise. I created like six new root issues um, last night with different visualizations of sub milestones. Um, like definitely um, learnings around if you break things up into a lot of different themes, hard to see what are the major milestones that are happening within there. All you get is the theme, not the milestone. Um, and also, uh, if you don't put any ETAs in your root issue, then then that gives us warnings and concerns. Uh, and so always put an ETA and uh, you know just do your best estimate for what's contained within um, the, the roadmap that's being described there. Um, but I definitely think this gives us a highly flexible tool. We're gonna keep iterating on it. Um, but the really cool thing that this is unlocks Again, all of these issues are happening in each team's specific repo in GitHub where they are tracking kind of their roadmap areas. Many different people own these different issues and can make their own views. Um, if you have other ecosystems in, um, you know, say the LibP2P space or IPFS where many different teams across implementations like IRO and um, uh, other groups are building uh, capabilities that create cross dependencies or should live in an overall IPFS project roadmap or um, Falcon project roadmap that extends across multiple groups. Um, we can create visualizations across the roadmaps of all of those different teams and communities. It's truly open source and cross ecosystem and network native in how it can visualize the, the contributions that are happening across many different teams. So we do not see this as a thing just for Endres, we are biting the bullet of helping build the tool and be early guinea pig testers of putting our roadmaps in it. But we would love to see this become more um, used and a tool that is uh, super valuable across the whole PL network. Um, but we still have some work to do to, to get it to that point. And one thing you'll notice as we start using these is that we'll start seeing that some of the milestones uh, won't line up, meaning uh, some dependencies will like strike out as, hey, wait, suddenly like these milestones won't actually be possible. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what we hope will pop out of a, a lot of this stuff. Um, so a lot of the, uh, these these are the first kind of integration of everybody's individual roadmaps. It'll take a, a while while we kind of sort through that and, and detangle some of the dependencies. And I think right now we don't have, we have children, but we don't have dependencies yet between different areas. And so that's a, a future thing um, for us to be able to define those dependencies and um, make things turn red if the timeline of a dependency is after the timeline of a thing that is dependent on it. Great, that, that gives us good uh, good signals. Um, and we can use these visualization tools to alert us and then drill down within these areas. Um, and so that is, this is the wonderful tool, Star Maps. You can open items in GitHub. Um, you can swap into a more detailed view that sees kind of the sub items within um, different themes. Um, all sorts of really, really cool stuff. And so big, big thanks to the Ignite team for building this. Please keep giving them lots of feedback as GitHub issues on the star maps repo. And, um, and yeah, we're going to keep, keep moving forward on it.